Okay, welcome back to our channel, Mega Team. Thanks for tuning into today's video. We're going to be taking a look at Bitcoin, and we're going to be talking about the bull market. We're going to be talking about the bear market, and we're going to be talking about the bottom. And I think this is a perfect time to be talking about it because Bitcoin has officially closed underneath the 200 day moving average and has opened a green candle. Really important stuff, guys. We've only closed underneath the 200 day moving average three other times in Bitcoin history, and that was firstly. Over here, the 20th of uh, the 4th of March 2020, the COVID crash. Uh, secondly, we had our close down over here. We had the 13th of August and obviously the 15th of August, as well as the 8th in 2015. Uh, all of these in 2015. Now, I say this one, we're not going to count on this one. What we are worried about is uh, the candle breaking below and closing. For example, this candle here broke below the 200 and closed below. This candle pushed above, the next candle broke below and closed below. Therefore, we broke down and closed under. These just technically closed underneath. So we have closed under the 200 a few times um, in the history of Bitcoin, and we've done it again. So four times now on the chart. This is the fourth time. The question is, are we going to see a similar response to what we have seen in the previous cycles? Or are we going to continue downwards? And we kind of answered that question in yesterday's video in a little bit more detail. Today's video, we're going to be focusing on the short term, talking about what's happening in the short term, giving our updates and analysis, and talking about Ethereum as well. So if you're interested in finding out all that kind of cool stuff, stick around to the end of the video and make sure to head down to the comment section down below. Join our Crypto Signal channel. It's on Telegram. You can join it for free. We have over 3,300 members now, which is great. I post daily updates, daily charts, a whole variety of other things in here, videos and more you can get access to for all for basically free. You don't have to pay a cent. Uh, if you are interested in the VIP channel, uh, we do have our VIP channel here. We post daily trade signals, uh, monthly uh, updates, exclusive market updates. You get direct message access to myself. And our track record is phenomenal. I'm not here to blow my own horn, but we've had significant profits every single month. We're talking 600%, 400%, 800%, 1000%. Not a single month in February 2021 have we turned a negative month, all right? So that is pretty significant. So if you're interested in that, comment section down below. Let's go ahead and get stuck into the video. So we just talked about how Bitcoin has recently closed under 200. We talked, gave you a few uh, examples or gave you a few scenarios on the chart where Bitcoin has, has actually done this in the past. We have managed to recover from that drop. And we're going to dive right into those a little bit more. So we see in this scenario here that next weekly, we had a pretty significant push upwards. Uh, this upward move in that next one on the 20, would be the 20th or the 18th of March, that weekly candle, we broke back above that 200, uh, never to really go back below it. In 2015, we had a little bit more of a tinkering around this level where we broke down. Our next weekly, we pushed upwards, held above it for a little bit, got rejected again, broke under, and then stayed under for a few weeks. So if it's anything like the, the last two scenarios, excluding this scenario over here, we're expecting the next weekly candle to be a very important weekly candle for Bitcoin. This is going to be incredibly important. And this could actually be a weekly candle that determines whether or not the bottom is confirmed or not confirmed. We're going to give two scenarios today because it kind of is in this scenario at the moment where we need to talk about two different possibilities. Possibility number one is the bottom, actually three scenarios. Number one, the bottom is in. Number two, the bottom is in, but not yet confirmed, which is what we're currently at. And number three, of course, which is the bottom is not in, we're going to be going lower. Those are the three scenarios. Now, the data we have to support the first two scenarios is, in fact, this chart. This chart suggests the bottom is in. We have reached the bottom. We have reached support. The same support line we retested uh, three, four other times over nine years has acted as strong support. We're underneath the 20 moving average. If the green candle can get above this 200 moving average and close above it, there's a good chance we flip the trend and start forming a new uptrend. That is a possibility, but I do want to say, do not expect the bottom or the bear market to be over. We do see periods like this where we have this extended bear market uh, until we enter a new rally. We do need to have a significant break over a certain point for the market to really uh, start rallying again. For 2018, we only really start to rally when we broke this level here, this resistance level over here. This is when we start to rally, even though the bottom was technically in, you know, the bottom was technically in at these prices. We only really rallied past 12,000. That's when the new uptrend kicked off. So the new uptrend will kick off much later just because we're bottomed out and the bottom has been confirmed doesn't mean we're initially 
going to straight away start a new uptrend. It doesn't work like that. All right, don't expect the uptrend to to happen straight away. It will take a bit of time for the market to healthily recover a little bit before it starts moving back up. If in fact this is a bottom. Now, scenario number two. This is not the bottom, and we're going to talk about this chart over here. So we're going to come back and talk about all this in a second. But more importantly, I want to zoom out and show you this major level of support, which is acting uh, currently, which we're kind of finding support on a resistance on, which is this solid box over here. This gray box between 17,500 and 19,200. This acted as a major resistance, uh, kicking off that bull run for Bitcoin in 2020, in the 25th of November, as well as the all-time high in, nine, in uh, sorry, 2017. Nearly said 2000. 1997, I don't know why, 2017. So that is what we're currently facing over here. Now, if the price has dropped below this level, and we talked about this in yesterday's video, if you want to get a more, more in detailed uh, analysis of what we think is gonna happen if we drop below 18,000, check out yesterday's video. We talked all about it today. We're not really gonna go into it. But if we do lose this level over here, that would be a sell signal. We can expect the price to drop anywhere between 16,500, which would be the support line over here, or that lower level around 12,000. Uh, absolute low for Bitcoin. I don't believe we'll go much lower than that. I think that's absolute low. Let's talk about this chart over here and talk about potential directions upwards. Um, and the whole premise of today's video is going to be under the assumption that the bottom is in because the data we have on the charts suggests, in fact, the bottom is in. And guess what, guys? The bottom, the data, the charts, they don't line up, meaning technical analysis can never predict the exact bottom. You have to use market analysis. You have to stru use structural analysis to predict or to find points on the chart that have significance and then assume, assume bottoms from those points. So yes, there is no technical confirmation as of yet that this is the bottom. The technical conf conf um, confirmation will come after the fact, all right, comes after the fact, but we can assume this is the bottom for now until proven otherwise based on historical data. That is what technical analysis is. That is why people can never predict the top. That is why people didn't predict the top the only reason why we predicted this top wasn't because of technicals. It was because we used this chart here. It predicted the exact top. The reason why many people who were still early to predict in the bear market were technically late compared to us was that we were relying on technicals. So yes, technicals are phenomenal at predicting trend, strength of trend, how far the trend will go. They're not too great at predicting exact bottoms or exact tops. You need to expand to momentum analysis. You need to expand to market analysis structural analysis more important on the log scale is a really good way to eliminate deviations or to deliver, uh, eliminate uh, points of which that have exceeded or underperformed uh, the average. So you can eliminate these massive standard deviations or deviations from the macro. Um, so I'm going on a tangent, but, but it is technically the bottom is in for that coin. Uh, well, for Bitcoin, apparently, according to that chart. Now, we do have the possibility of going lower. We talked about that. We'll come, come and come back to talk about the short term in a second. But going back to this chart, so this is a label chart, and go ahead and screenshot this chart, chuck it on your computer, whatever. Um, this is all the zones of resistance and support that we currently have in this pattern. We are in this descending channel formation, and I've identified three parts, there's three zones. We have our neutral zone, which is this middle zone. We have our resistance zone, which is this upper zone. And we have the support zone, which is this lower zone. The prices seem to bounce between these levels. And if you remember back to, geez, it would have been the start of April, January, March, end of March, where we were at 48K over here and everyone was going crazy. You know, we're back in a bull market, we're back in a bull market. That was just a blow off top. That was just a bull trap, guys. RSI can, in fact, confirm that. Of course, with the blow off top in November when we had that bearish divergence signaling the top of that cycle. And obviously, we crashed back in. You can see this zone here has acted as strong support. We've seen strong support at the bottom over here, breaking down with strong support, obviously rejecting, pushing upwards. Again, resistance support throughout this entire area. I can, I can indicate many, many points of which we've found resistance support. This channel is very much intact, very much a relevant macro structure at the moment. And it can be used to predict the next move. So essentially what we're looking for, guys, is we're looking for a bounce out of this structure. We're looking for a push over 20,500, hopefully a daily close of a 20, over 20,500. Uh, what that will re uh, relate to, if we go to a daily chart on this chart, we will get a bullish engulfing candle. Now, it says the price is 20,500 here. The actual price is 20,000. It's quite delayed. But if we can get a daily candle close of 20,500, not only do we bullish engulf the previous candle, which is really, really bullish, guys, for reversal, but also we actually get 
a breakout of this downward slope and resistance within this support zone on the macro chart for Bitcoin on the descending channel on the standard chart, which is a very, very good sign for a potential push upwards. And this push upwards could take us to this next resistance, possibly even this next resistance zone at $28,000 to retest and continue upwards. So we do have a major support here. We talked about major support. We lose the support, we head down. All right, while we're above the support, we have to assume we're bullish. We have to assume we can make a move upwards. The short term, we do need confirmation before we can agree with that. We'll come back to that in a second and a potential move upwards. Moving up from there, we have major resistances, major supports. Obviously, the most important resistance we need to clear to become bullish on the macro is this one here. This resistance, we need to clear that bull trap to become bullish on the macro. Until then, we're just going to see a short term bounce. We could de definitely see a bounce out of the zone before we push back downwards. That is a possibility. Or we could just get rejected from here, never break over, and just continue downwards from here. So let's take a look at this chart. This is the short term. This is expecting a move upwards of about 23,000. If this plays out, we will expect a move up to 23,000, hopefully, daily close above that 22,000, uh, 20,500 level. So Bitcoin is in an ascending broadening wedge. It's a very small broadening wedge in the sense that there's not much deviation between the two trend lines, but there is a deviation. There's a separation between the trend lines, a, a very small one, in fact, but not a very, not a very huge one. So what does that signal? Well, it means that this wedge, is this broadening wedge, doesn't really have a very high measured move target. We take the measured move target from that top of the wedge inwards, and we can see that top of the wedge lines up between this solid line and this upper resistance. Now, the reason why I have the solid line targeted because measured moves don't tell you the exact price it's going to go to. They tell you a potential direction and a potential top of that range. If we have a more important resistance below the measured move target, we assume that more important resistance, that stronger resistance is going to be the point at which the price bottoms out and does not move past it until proven otherwise. Therefore, we have our target here initially, initially, guys. Now, the RSI is suggesting that we do have a bit of divergence over here. Um, we have this sideways pushing broadening wedge on the RSI, which is neither bullish or bearish. It doesn't really have too much of a slope, but kind of sideways downward broadening wedge on the chart. It can suggest we are able to push downwards to retest this midline before we push upwards, which could result in a touch of 19,250 before we break upwards again. Or if we lose that midline, we can expect it to head back downwards to this lower range to find support somewhere around the 20 on RSI which would retest at 18,000 or 17,500. Now, if we do retest at 18,000 or 17,500, the chart will look very, very bearish on the short term. It will flip completely and we can assume that we could potentially break uh, downwards through this range to $12,000 uh, or even 16,500. Now, I get a lot of questions. And this video is, I know we're going for a bit of time over here. Thanks for sticking around, everyone. I really appreciate it. I've got a lot of information to pump out. So I'm talking a little quickly, but I hope everything's making sense so far. If you don't, if you have any questions, chuck them down below. I'll happily go through and answer them all uh, for you. But uh, just bear with me while we get the rest of this video done. Um, so what I was about to say is, what are the chances of us seeing some kind of scam wick or a drop below of this macro structure before we head back up? Now, we've talked about this on the channel a little bit already. I'm going to go into a little bit more. There is a possibility we'll see some sort of scam wick or a singular wick down below this channel, closing below and pushing back upwards. I will not wipe that out. And that is why I've been saying for confirmation of a breakdown, guys, we want that three day. All right. The confirmation, not the weekly. We don't care too much about the weekly, the three day. So the three day confirmation is what we're looking for. If the three day candle drops below and closes below, that is when we've got confirmation that this trend is lost. The reason we're not using it daily in this scenario is because of the sheer size of this trend. It is a massive trend line. A daily is just not going to cut the cheese. We need a little bit more data than just one day underneath a nine year trend line to confirm a potential breakdown. So three day. If it doesn't close, three day, we're all good, all right? Anything above that, perfectly fine. Now we're gonna quickly talk about what you should be doing. Well, so we talked about this in yesterday's video. I'm gonna reiterate again today for all the new viewers. And of course, thanks for tuning into the video. Consider smashing that like button and subscribing. We give you the most honest and accurate, sorry, accurate TA on the market. And um, we're obviously uh, been on top of this market the entire way. We haven't really missed a single move. So of course, what happens now is guys, you're looking to enter. You really are. Now, I'm not saying, aggressively because we don't have confirmation yet we definitely don't have confirmation we definitely don't have enough uh, data to suggest this is in fact 100 percent going to be the bottom so i can't say aggressively into the market what i can say is look to pick up something look to pick up some coins look up look definitely look to pick up some bitcoin for the long term because right now your risk reward is phenomenal 
you're realistically only risking at the moment 15% and the upside is phenomenal. You know, who knows how high Bitcoin will go eventually, you know, 500%, 600%. So your risk reward is definitely favorable. Now, the other way around guys, when we lose this trend line, the risk reward becomes then unfavorable because the potential risk has massively increased by 30%. It's a very different scenario, all right? So while we're over this trend line, you should be bullish. You, there's no reason why you should be bearish. And I get a lot of questions is, and I, I think this myself is, the economic situation is not really cultivating an environment where Bitcoin can go upwards. It's not really cultivating an environment where Bitcoin's bullish. How can we assume Bitcoin's going to flip the trend and continue upwards when the economy is looking so bad, when interest rates are rising, when everything's, you know, basically awful? And the question, the answer to that is I have is trust the trend because economic data, economic information can make the market move, but there are certain levels on a chart where buyers will be met and the price will be essentially priced in for them for a period of time. And even in the COVID crash, although we lost this major dollar trend line, we, we still came down and retested here. And yeah, we could have gone lower, guys. There's no reason why we shouldn't. We could have definitely gone lower. The economy basically was tumbling, but we found support and we pushed upwards. Same scenario here. We're finding support. We could potentially push upwards. And of course, there's a lot more to it than that. I'm not going to go into it. And the people are going to, in the comments are going to say, mega wow, there's so much more to it. They're yes. There is so much more to it and we've explained it many many times our diagrams over here and we've talked about why of course bitcoin and uh, cryptocurrency exploded in the covid rally and all that kind of stuff it's a very different scenario so i'm not going to put two and two together but all i'm trying to say is that even when there is very very negative news it doesn't mean the price is always going to just go straight down we can find points of support we can bounce from these points of support and even if you enter now and it goes upwards 20 percent, you take profit you've won so what i'm trying to say is don't enter aggressively but make sure your outlook is an overly bearish. Don't blind yourself to potential upside when we have reached major support. And I was telling people exactly the same thing over here. And over here, guys, I was telling everyone the same thing. I was saying, we're at a point of bearish divergence. We've retested a major macro trend. We are officially bearish. We're expecting, you know, 24K was our initial target from here. We did reach that. I can go ahead and show you if you don't believe me. For the new viewers, you can go ahead and look at over here. All right, there's our targets. We've got so much more of those um, on our channel. You can go ahead and find all our targets. For example, here's another one. Um, anyway, we've got data or proof and data about all of this stuff. So we're not trying to prove anything here. But what I was trying to tell people is the upside risk, the downside risk becomes too much and you have to be aware that potential downside is is relevant it's there it's not going anywhere so when it becomes you know to the point at which your risk reward ratio isn't favorable you have to automatically assume the latter you have to be open to the idea that you are wrong and it could potentially go the other way so you don't get wrecked because everyone who said up here bitcoin is never going down bitcoin is going to 250k guess where they're selling they're selling here they're selling under 20k guys they're scared they're fearful they're getting wrecked Everyone has said the same thing over here. Bitcoin is going up 100K, never going to go down. They sold down here. They got wrecked. Same thing happens again. Now, everyone's saying, oh, Bitcoin's bottom. Bitcoin's not bottoming out. Bitcoin's going to go to freaking $4,000. Guess what? Majority is wrong. If we go ahead and invert the scale, what do you think happens next? Would you say this is going to drop down from here or continue upwards? Just a food for thought, guys. When you invert the chart, everything changes. When you see this, would you say Bitcoin is going to retrace downwards a little bit? Maybe find some support lower before retesting? Or do you think it's going to just shoot right through that and continue upwards? Question, food for thought, of course. All right. Uh, that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and introduce BitGet. And I really, really like this exchange. I hope you enjoyed the video so far. When we get back from the BitGet exchange, I'm going to go ahead and flip it to Ethereum. We'll talk about Ethereum for a little bit. I just had a member request that we talked about Ethereum. So I'm going to go ahead and just chuck that into the video. And um, we'll catch you in the next video, of course, but stick around to the end if you want to hear about Ethereum. Okay, guys, so we're going to take a look at BitGet next. And I highly, highly recommend Sign to BitGet. This is what I personally trade. So if you want to be trading where I trade on a daily basis, Sign to BitGet in the comment down below. You'll see the referral link. Just go ahead and click that. You can sign up and you get access to our reward center if you sign up. And there's a whole range of different things you can do here to um, basically get rewards. And, you know, the rewards bonus up to 4163 US dollars, which is pretty significant. Um, but you can go ahead and get access to that if you click the link down below. Beyond that, guys, I really do like BitGet Exchange. I'm not just saying that to shill you guys a referral link. Honestly, sign up without the referral link. I don't care. I'm, I'm honestly telling you guys 0.02% trading fees is just 
too good to miss. You just really can't miss it. It's 0.02%, guys. It's insane. But this is the futures over here, and it's it's a global exchange that doesn't have KYC. So anyone can access this from anywhere in the world and get access to all the tools. So whether you're in Australia and you generally can't access futures, you can sign up here and get access to futures. If you're in, uh, let's say, for example, I think the UK and you can't get access to futures, you can sign up here and get access to futures. If you're in America and you can't get access to um, Binance or Binance Global and you can't access a lot of their spot trading pairs. They have all the spot trading pairs that Binance has over here plus more. They have over 250 spot trading pairs and all the big ones on this exchange that you can trade and the liquidity is quite high. So I highly recommend signing up here and of, of course like I just mentioned you get access to that reward center, just copy trading, there's a whole range of other things um, and go ahead and sign up guys because it really is probably the best exchange out there. All right let's go ahead and get back into the video. Okay guys, um, Ethereum is looking pretty decent right now. We have found support at a major support zone at 1,000, of course. Bouncing on there in a seven day, looking at the one day, we're looking like we are finding a bit of support. Of course, if we do lose $1,000, guys, the next target is $594 at this lower support range over here. And of course, it can potentially go even lower. Now, I'm definitely not saying doomsday. I'm definitely not screaming for blood. But what I am saying is that we have found a major support zone, but we are still under major resistances. And until we start flipping these resistances, I wouldn't be touching Ethereum personally. I think I would only touch Ethereum if we start flipping this resistance here and find a little bit of support. Until then, you're really just trying to catch this falling knife because we don't really know how low it can go. All right. Um, what I can say is be cautious with Ethereum. Uh, expect lower price targets. Don't be surprised if it does drop. But of course, it will follow Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin starts moving upwards here, break some resistances, we can expect Ethereum to do the same thing. But why but on the more risky option when you can get on Bitcoin, which is a little bit more safe in this current time. All right. So for those of you who are wondering about Ethereum, it has reached our targets. We were telling you at around, uh, what were we telling you? Around like 2000 or something. We we're telling you up over here. Sorry, in 2006, we're telling you 1,700 was our target. We've reached 1,700. 1,200 was our target. We reached that. We didn't think 1,000. We weren't really looking after 1,200. We agreed that, you know, 1,200 was up that initial point which we were taking profits in our shorts. We didn't really care if it went lower. And I still don't really care if it goes lower now until it gets over that major resistance zone or reaches some of these levels down here. It's not really on my radar. I'm not really paying too much attention. All right. Uh, that being said, guys, I hope this video has been informative. Uh, Informally, should I say, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.